Christmas reading from Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This has been a really different kind of Christmas season, hasn't it? I mean, because of COVID-19, a lot of the Christmas parties that we usually go to were just canceled. Uh, they, they didn't happen. There've been a, a whole lot less carolers in our neighborhood also, and masks, well, Masks are masking a lot of the Christmas joy uh, in our community these days. I, I even miss those uh, children's Christmas patches. I love children's Christmas patches, I really do. I love uh, to see uh, angels with sort of crooked wings and uh, shepherds that have, that have been engulfed by their, their dad's big bathrobes and, uh, and and animals and sheep and goats and uh, yeah, just the whole the whole thing. Uh, Christmas really isn't Christmas for me uh, until I've seen a children's Christmas pageant. I read about a really special children's Christmas pageant earlier this week. Uh, it seems that some very enterprising first graders decided to write their own Christmas pageant. They wanted it to be a new modern Christmas pageant, so they, they put together all of their imaginative and creative juices, and, and they came up with a, a, new, a new nativity story. And when the people came to see the play, I mean, all the familiar characters were present. There was Joseph, and there were shepherds, and uh, there were animals, and there were wise men, uh, even an angel that popped up behind the scene at one point, but no matter where the people looked, they couldn't find Mary. Mary was just nowhere to be seen. And then somewhere in the middle of that little play, they began to hear some groans, groaning coming from behind a, a half-destroyed bale of hay. Uh, the groans got louder and louder and louder. Apparently, these first graders have been watching a whole lot of medical shows on television, and uh, this is how they envisioned Mary being in labor. As soon as those groans got really loud, a, a doctor appeared on the stage. He had on a starched white coat, and, and he had a stethoscope around his neck that, that almost went down below his knees. Joseph greeted the doctor and took him around uh, behind those bales of hay, and then Joseph came back out center stage. And he started pacing back and forth, back and forth across the stage. And, and what seemed like an eternity, but it was really only maybe one minute, everyone heard this uh, slap. And then they heard a baby crying. <laughs> the doctor came around back on the center stage again. He walked up to Joseph, shook his hand, handed him a cigar and said, congratulations, Joseph, it's a god. Oh, man, I love that. Congratulations, Joseph. It's a God. Uh, there's so much more to Christmas than presents or good food. There's a lot more to Christmas than uh, holiday bowl games or uh, getting to be able to see family and friends. Uh, Christmas is about God. Congratulations, Joseph. It's a God. <laughs> Christmas, in Christmas, God is the central character of the story. That's right. Christmas is about the incarnation. God so loving the world that God gave his only begotten son. It's about God coming in flesh and Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, Will Willimon has written some fascinating words about God taking on human flesh, the incarnation. He says this, the incarnation not only tells us who God is, 
but also God's intentions for us. Can you hear that? The incarnation not only tells us who God is, but also God's intentions for us. And think about that. Christmas tells us that Jesus is God. Uh, Jesus is not God's plan B uh, after we humans screwed up plan A in the Garden of Eden. Uh, Jesus is God. John chapter 1 verse 3 says that the Word was with God in the beginning. And it says in verse 3, through him all things were created. Colossians 1.16 says, by him all things were made. Jesus is is God. It's a, he's Emmanuel, God with us. God, uh, the God who has been, the God who isn't, the God who will be. Jesus is God. And, and, and secondly, uh, Jesus is the Savior. This child born uh, to Mary uh, was to be named and was named Jesus. In the Hebrew, Yeshua, which means God saved. Uh, this, this child of Mary's is God saves or God makes whole. That's what saved uh, means uh, in, in the New Testament. It means to be made whole, to be made whole in your relationship with God, to be made whole in body, soul, and spirit, to be made whole in relationship to others, to be made whole in relationship to yourself, to be whole, to be at, at shalom, at peace, in perfect community with all. Jesus is the God who saves, the one who comes to make us whole. It's as if in the birth of Jesus, God says, if you want to know who I am, and, and, and if you want to know uh, what I want for you, if you want to know what I'm up to, what I've always been up to, well, look at Jesus. Just look at him. You'll, you'll be able to tell. Uh, Jesus is the Word who became flesh, who lived among us and died. And that's why we celebrate communion on Holy Communion, because we worship the Savior who came and died for the whole world. Uh, that's Christmas. God's love for us is so intense that God entered our world in, in a way that we could understand as a little baby, human, living and dying flesh. <laughs> Praise God. So, as you're about everything that you have to do today and, and then Christmas Day, I, I, I just, uh, I hope you remember those first graders and their uh, magnificent Christmas pageants that they put together. Uh, whatever you do, uh, listen again to the good doctor's words when he said, congratulations, Joseph. It's a God. <laughs> Christmas is about God. God born into this world. God wishing to take up residence in the world and in your world. In fact, Jesus is God wanting to take up residence in your life, in your heart, in your soul, by which we mean, by which I mean everything that you are. A Christmas Eve, uh, that's just a great time to let the story of Jesus come full circle and to not celebrate so much Jesus coming into the world, but to issue an invitation that says, Jesus, come into my life because I need a Savior. Uh, I, 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 need, I need to be made whole. I need to be saved from my sin, from the way I do relationships and the way I, I do life. I need to be made whole to enter into your abundant life. Come into my heart, Lord, today. And just as in Nazareth and in Bethlehem you, you, you lived, come live in me. Come live in me. Come, Lord. Bless your holy name on this Christmas Eve. Amen. Uh, from the entire staff at First United Methodist Church, uh, I wish you a very Merry Christmas. <laughs>